We've spent the past couple of weeks exploring aberrations on an individualized basis, but optical systems exhibit all kinds of aberrations simultaneously, and testing each aberration individually to find image quality would be impractical, so different metrics have been developed to measure overall image quality. For instance, spot diagrams, a point spread function, and line spread function can be used to model, estimate, and describe the image blur of a system, whereas the optical transfer function and resulting modulation transfer function describes the contrast, visibility, or resolution of a system. The point spread function gives a map of image blur, assuming a point source as the object being imaged. The line spread function can be obtained by integrating a cross-section of the point spread function. Experimentally, it can be obtained by finding the slope of a knife edge trace, which is a plot of normalized beam power against the position of a knife scanned across the image point. The modulation transfer function is pretty well the universal metric for image quality. It essentially creates a function of contrast as it relates to the spatial frequency of the object being imaged. However, no matter how advanced an optical system gets, image quality is limited by physics, in this specific case diffraction. Using software, the specific MTF taking into account all aspects of the lens design can be plotted against the diffraction limited MTF of the same system assuming no aberrations, to see how well the design of said system images an object with respect to its absolute potential within the realm of physics. The goal of this lab is to measure the MTF of a diffraction limited system built in lab. To start the lab, a long and short rail were mounted to the optical table perpendicular to each other. A spatially filter collimated beam expander was then set up along the two rails using a mirror to fold the system 9 degrees. This was all performed using the standard procedures in the previous labs. Fresnel diffraction through a circular aperture appears on an observation plane as a fringe pattern consisting of a circle encircled by a series of concentric rings. The number of rings or fringes as well as whether the central circle is light or dark can be changed by adjusting the distance of the observation plane from the aperture and described by the Fresnel number corresponding to the observation plane to an aperture distance. Once the distance is large enough, it reaches the Fraunhofer region where the, the diffraction pattern appears as a Fourier transform of the aperture. In order to observe the diffraction of the collimated source and lab, an iris was inserted after the collimation lens at a beam expander, allowing us to close down the expanded beam. Using the aperture size, we calculated the distance at which we'd expect to have a Fresnel number of 1, which serves as our observation point. We placed a microscope on the rail to observe the irradiant spot pattern at the location of the first few Fresnel numbers. We determine the best focus of the lens with a circular aperture combination experimentally by observing the diffraction. Using the equation shown, the distance Z1, or the distance from the source to the aperture lens combination, becomes the focal length of the lens, which in our case was 1,000 millimeters. The quantity Z1 is negative due to convention. The distance Z2 is calculated for various Fresnel numbers by changing aperture size to find the plus minus one wave of defocus shown in the table. The location of best focus was found by taking the average of the two locations of plus and minus one wave of defocus for each aperture size. We found an inversely proportional relationship between aperture size and separation between the plus and minus one wave of defocus. This being stated, the smaller the aperture, the greater the accuracy of the measured best focus location. Creating a diffraction limited system in this lab depends on our aperture size. The aperture radius determines what Fresnel number is achievable. We assumed an area diameter of 300 micron, which is larger than 200 micron to ensure that the beam would be measurable. The system is diffraction limited because of our use of a 1000 millimeter focal length lens that resulted in a very large F number of about 194, and the slower the F number, the less aberration that results in the system. The cutoff frequency defines our slit width for finding the line spread function. For measuring the line spread function, we again found the best focus, but since the slit had to be located at best focus and we had other alignment and mounting problems earlier constraining our time, we used our eyes and microscope to locate what we thought was best focus. From the cutoff frequency, we found that our slit width should be about 0.1228 millimeters. Using the X-translation micrometer on the microscope, we fo focused on the surface of the slit and ensured that the slit was at the correct width. We expected to see an airy disc pattern at the best focus in our raw data. This means that there should be a peak in the center, since a Fresnel number is 1 and dictates constructive interference at the center. In the plus and minus 1 wave positions, we should see two peaks in the raw data with a dip in the center. The Fresnel number for 1 wave of defocus is 2, and negative 2. In the center, destructive interference is happening, creating the dip. Constructive interference is happening in the ring surrounding the center. The range that we traveled on the micrometer implied that the size of our beam for the single data set we were able to take in lab was much greater than what we had planned. This is a huge hint that we were majorly defocused from best focus, and that this can also be seen in our raw data, where two peaks are roughly shown. Our MTF is then not accurate, as the data had been processed with the assumption of no waves of defocus. Here we can see our theoretical MTF curve according to Zmax. It looks what we would expect uh, following the traditional curve. However, our data, since we had very skewed results, as mentioned before, we did not get something that looked quite as similar. Uh, particularly, the scaling was different. Here we see the line spread function that we had recovered from our data which is close to what we had seen from Zmax whenever we had plotted it theoretically. Our sources of errors can contributed to the fact that everything that could have gone mechanically wrong did.